Today I'm going to be discussing a largely forgotten stadium, the Georgia Dome, and what if I told you that the Georgia Dome opened the same year as Oriole Park at Camden Yards, yet it was demolished at this point almost a decade ago, falling in 2016 right next to the new Mercedes-Benz Stadium, and I always love the photos of the Georgia Dome next to Mercedes-Benz Stadium and how futuristic Mercedes-Benz Stadium looks compared to the Georgia Dome, those stadiums about 20, 25 years apart, that is what we call innovation. Now, when it comes to the Georgia Dome originally opening back in the early 1990s, not only did it host the Atlanta Falcons, which is what it was most known for, but how about also hosting three Final Fours, the SEC Championship game, which obviously was and still probably is the premier conference in college football, and it also hosted the Atlanta Hawks for three seasons as State Farm Arena was being built. And that was kind of commonplace back in the 80s and 90s. You would have NBA teams temporarily moving into these NFL stadiums with the clownish seating capacity. Normally, it would be a configuration similar to what the JMA Wireless Dome in Syracuse, where you've got basically half of the stadium completely shut off, like cut off in the other half has the court on it, but in general, the Georgia Dome was a very average stadium. Obviously, nowadays, this is something that never would have been built, but when it comes to demolishing it as quickly as they did, originally, there was a lot of opposition to doing this, and not only was there opposition, the original thought was, of course, a renovation, just like any stadium after 15, 20 years, you're going to do a big makeover. And they did have the idea of possibly removing the roof completely and adding a different structure, a retractable roof to the stadium, also taking out upper deck seating behind both of the end zones, which would enable natural light and also windows to go up. Those were two main things they were looking at. However, there was a case study done and it was found that the massive renovation that would have happened to the Georgia Dome would have almost cost as much as building a brand new super stadium, which ended up costing around $1.6 billion that was and is Mercedes-Benz Stadium. When I look at the potential renovated Georgia Dome, I don't want to say it looks like lipstick on a pig, but it's just not the best. I mean, you can still tell it's an older stadium, even with all of the renovations. You know what it reminds me of? There was another potential renovation idea for a dome stadium, the Edwards Jones Dome in St. Louis. And with like these older domes that don't have any natural light, trying to renovate them and put natural light into it, it just doesn't really work. It doesn't look that good and it's probably not worth it. And they deemed at that point the Georgia Dome, well the original plan was, we know the Georgia Dome is not very old. Yes, it would be a waste to demolish it. Let's keep the Georgia Dome and have it host other events, leave it as it is. They did technically renovate it by changing the seats. And I do think the new seat color that they had there to match the Falcons colors was very nice. You've got like the bright red in the lower bowl. Then you've got the black for the club section. And then you've got the bright red in the upper deck. The roof, uh, obviously not very optimal, although it does give kind of a silver dome feel in, in terms of the natural light on the exterior, possibly giving you some of that on the interior. The issue is it, it just comes off when you're watching games on TV in domed stadiums that have no natural light. It, it almost comes off like the field is damp and it's just a bad viewing experience. And by the way, when it comes to these blimp type roofs that kind of let in a little bit of natural light, but not much, the first real translucent roof that let in significant sunlight was actually one of these designs. Now, obviously there's always been translucent roofs, but in terms of putting them on top of stadiums that hasn't been popular until recently, when the Metrodome suffered that roof collapse, they replaced the roof for a few seasons, the final season of the Metrodome even existed, with kind of like translucent blimp tiles that let in a ton of natural light. And it made that stadium a lot better, but nobody remembers it because it only lasted for a few years. Then the Metrodome got demolished and they moved into a new stadium, U.S. Bank Stadium. But that's just an interesting fact. When it comes to the Georgia Dome, the roof kind of reminds me of like a circus design. 
it just doesn't look very good. And the idea of renovating it and possibly adding some type of retractable aspect of it, also putting up windows and knocking down a bunch of the upper deck sections, it would just cost so much money. It really doesn't make sense. And it is kind of interesting because people were saying like this stadium is very young. You're not to demolish this. That's a, a total waste. And they kind of said, oh yeah, we're just going to keep it up and use it for other events, which made no sense. I mean, the new stadium is going right next to the old stadium. What is the purpose of having the old stadium? Do you really need to have two massive stadiums next to each other? Is Atlanta really going to have that many events? And of course, they ended up demolishing it. I think they always wanted to demolish it. They didn't want that thing right next to their brand new stadium. The Falcons did realize that the Georgia Dome was quickly going out of style in the early 2000s. And instead of trying to swim up water by doing some crazy renovation, they said, let's just build a brand new super stadium. And that is exactly what they did. It's also interesting, the Falcons have always wanted an open-air stadium, and the original plan was to build an open-air stadium. They ended up building, I guess you can call it a retractable roof stadium. Obviously, the new stadium that they have, it's basically modeled around the idea of a very cool swivel retractable roof, but that roof design really takes away from a lot of the natural light that would come in through the top when the roof is open. They very rarely have the roof open of that new stadium, and when they do, even for one o'clock games, it creates crazy shadows, and that's due to the circle design of the open area of the roof. And, and so much of that stadium is still covered because of that design. So it's interesting. It's like, it is a retractable roof, but it does not let in a lot of natural light at all. And it's funny because the Falcons were talking about possibly getting a new stadium because they wanted the natural light. But of course, the new stadium does have the windows. It's gonna let in natural light that way anyways. It's just funny. Either way, that is the story of the Georgia Dome. Really doesn't get discussed much, even though it did host three Final Fours. It hosted the Atlanta Falcons. It hosted the Atlanta Hawks for a few years, along with other various events. And at this point, in terms of pro stadiums in North America, it, it's got to be one of the shortest tenure pro stadiums we've seen. And because of that, it's enabled Atlanta to make a smooth transition into their new stadium and really continue to host major events if they would have held on to the Georgia Dome, maybe try to renovation. They probably still would have gotten big events, honestly, but there is a bit of an effect having the brand new sparkling stadium, unlike some other cities wanting to keep their old stadiums. Again, when it comes to them actually demolishing the Georgia Dome, it kind of seems like they just tiptoed their way into it by saying, we're going to keep it up. We're going to use the Georgia Dome. We know it's not very old. We don't want to be wasteful and demolish it. And then they were like, yeah, it's got to go. It's right next to the stadium. There's no reason to have two stadiums right next to each other, especially the, you know, one's completely obsolete. It looks bad right next to the new modern futuristic stadium. So that is the story of the Georgia Dome. It was not around for long, but it did host a lot of big events. And it is actually kind of funny when you compare it to Turner Field, another stadium, home of the Atlanta Braves, that also didn't last very long. Although that was a bit of a different situation with that stadium originally being built in part for the Olympics and then being turned into an MLB stadium. But Atlanta had two options with two stadiums and in both situations they chose new stadium over major renovation, which is normally not what happens, especially a stadium that's only 20 to 25 years old. So some rare circumstances that led to Atlanta getting two new stadiums recently. But guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you follow me on X. Link to that's always in the description.